Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to take a look at in this installment of the building an ISP is we are going to take a look at our UISP Fiber OLT XGS. So let's hop on over to this. Now, like I told you before, we're going to go through each one of these, look at the specs, talk about what it is. The next video after this will be our WM, uh, WDM filter and then uh, our modules and cables, and then we'll start throwing everything together. So this is actually the second time that I filmed this video because the first time there was really no audio. So let's try this again. All right, so over here at the Ubiquity store, you can see our UISP Fiber OLT XGS. And if you remember from when we were talking about our glossary and our definitions, that S on the S mean that S on the end of this means that it can produce symmetrical speeds for the client. So let's take a look a little bit more. MSRP coming in at $3,999 and zero zero cents. And it does have eight OLT ports that can deliver 10 gigs symmetrical up and download to over 2000 subscribers. So it does have that capability to do the 10 gig symmetrical 2048 client capacity over the eight ports, four 25 gig SFP 28 uplink ports. And before those of you in the comments go ape about ubiquity, not having a router that can do 25 gig ports, I don't know any more than you do, but I would guess if they're releasing this product under the UISP label, that we're eventually going to see something that has got 25 gig ports. And um, so let's just sit on our hat for a moment and, and wait for that and not complain about that. Uh, it is one U rack mountable and does have redundant power. And it's funny because uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about in the next video is this UISP Fiber Coexistence WDM filter. And then we're going to talk about all of our optical transceivers and our cabling in future videos. So this is the front of the device. Over here you have all of your status lights. So you have your uh, 8 XGS, XG, or GPON ports. And you can see that here. And we talk about the 2048 client capacity. Now... What this means is depending on the module that you have installed, we can provide multiple different services out of a single box, which is why the coexistence um, uh, piece will be Im important later. But so the XGS, if you remember, is 10 gig symmetrical. So 10 gig upload and download. XG is 10 gig down, but not 10 gig up, so it's not symmetrical speeds. And then GPON, you're going to get up to 1 gig down and probably not 1 gig up. Then you've got your 425 gig SFP28 ports. You've got an RJ45 port for your console. I love standard console cables where I'm not messing around with USB. And then you have your out-of-band management port here which you can actually manage this in band or out of band. And we're going to look, look at that and what that means uh, when we do the setup. And then you've got your reset button on the back. You can see we've got three fans and this thing actually isn't loud. The edge router infinity is the louder of the two devices. It does have cable latches on the power supplies. And you can see here that we can have the redundant power supply modules. Here's the footprint. It's pretty much the same size as that edge router infinity down here under the tech specs. If uh, you don't measure things in freedom units uh, for the rest of the world, it's 5.29 kilograms. And in the U S 11.7 pounds, I'm, I'm sure there's other places in besides the U S that are using pounds, but uh, I think the majority of the, <laughs> the world using uh, metric there. Here's the, recap of our interfaces and it is important to note anytime you see an asterisk and they're telling you something you should you should take note and right here it's telling us the four sfp28 ports don't support mixed speed mode at 25 gig mode once one of the sfp28 ports is configured at 25 gig mode the others will be limited at 25 so that means that you can't run one port at 25 and then one at 10 and one at one. You can't do that. If it's if you have one port at 25 gigs, all four of those ports are going to be at 25 gigs. If you need 
mixed speed mode, you're going to have to do one or 10 gig. As far as the management interface goes, we've got that Ethernet out of band, which is where we can put an IP address on that physical management interface and connect it to a VLAN or a network that is not the same as our, our client network. You can, though, do an in-band, um, and we'll, we'll show you that, all the, the VLAN options and things like that. They, they give you a lot of management options, and it's, it's fantastic. Of course, we have the RJ45 serial console port, and then it does have that low-power Bluetooth built in. We've got 512 megs of DDR3 RAM. As far as storage goes, we've got 64 megs of NOR and 512 megs of NAND. So doesn't really need a lot of a lot of storage here it has an operating system and then you've got to store firmware upgrades and some things like that power supply you can see that we've got two hot swap acdc units there max supported voltage range on the high end is 240 volts but look at this the max power consumption of this device is 70 watts it can operate in an ambient temperature range of 14 degrees to 113 degrees so think about that where you're going to have this what kind of cabinets you're going to have it in down here it tells us about our um, leds and what it means you can go check that out but the one thing that it doesn't have here is the processor and if you're interested in that we can probably find it either somewhere on the ubiquity site or we could you know dig around i'm sure somebody else has asked that question so this is this is a very important piece of the puzzle one of the next pieces like i said will be we'll go over our uisp fiber coexistence wdm filter man that's a mouthful then we're going to go over all of our optics and our cabling then we will install uisp and we will get everything adopted and start the configuration so if you've got questions about the Ufiber OLT XGS, let me know down below. Like I said, once we get this built, if people want a, an invitation to the UISP installation that we're going to use for this, you're going to be able to sign up for that. I did uh, have another uh, public thing where I was inviting people to a piece of storage. Somebody unfortunately couldn't behave themselves, so we're not doing that. But UISP in the lab, there's not really much you're going to be able to uh, to do to that. I mean, you might be able to, to delete configurations depending on how I set you up, but um, there shouldn't be as many shenanigans with this. So uh, you will be able to get invited to this. If you got, like I said, if you've got questions about this, ask it down below. If I can answer the questions, I will. If, if I can't, I'll send them over to my contacts at Ubiquity and we'll see if we can get answers for you. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with affiliate links and a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form that's on the front page and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Also, head on over to community.willyhow.com. Join the community, ask your questions, participate, share your expertise. We are building a great community over there, and I appreciate everybody that's over there helping us out. Once again, I'm Willie. If you've got questions, post them down below, reach out if you need to, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.